Class of 2022, have your seats for a second for us. Hello and greetings to you all. Greetings to our family and friends of Martin University. I am Dr. Manny Jones, Provost and Executive Vice President of Academic Affairs. I'm here to welcome you for our 53rd commencement celebration. On the behalf of President Huddleston, I would like to welcome the Honorable Mayor Joseph Hassett, Martin Board of Trustees, and First Lady Huddleston. I, I would also like to welcome our parents, families, and friends here to celebrate with our students. I just want to share with you that this year marks the second year that Martin University has incorporated presenting a Kente style as a gift to our graduates. And you all were presented with your gifts to, uh, this morning as you got dressed. I want to take a moment just to share with you the importance of the kente style. The kente cloth is traditionally worn by kings and queens in Ghana. The kente cloth covers have specific a symbolic meaning and reminds us all of what is important. The red on your stars sacrificed for those who came before us. The yellow, the wealth of our people. The green, the richness of our ancestral land. The black, the oneness of our origin and people. The meaning of the stripes on the, on the Kente style, this particular pattern on our style is called the Bababua, which translates to strength. The Bababua tree was used in building fences, roofs, barricades during war, and inspired this pattern. It depicts strength, toughness, and resilience. The chief's throne, which is there, represents power, prestige, and authority. This throne is placed on the stall to symbolize our rule as leaders. As Indiana's only predominantly black university, it is an honor to give the graduating class of 2022 the Kente Star. Thank you. At this time, I would like to present to you Mr. Alonzo Lawrence, if you look in your program, you read his bio, with singing of the national anthem, which afterwards, Dr. our chaplain of Martin University, Dr. Dorothy Harem, will give the invocation. Still there. Oh. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Lord, we will rejoice and be glad in it that we are thankful for. We are thankful that almost 50 years ago, a man by the name of Boniface Harton stepped out on faith, followed his heart and vision. It was Martin University that he shared with all of us, including those graduating here today and 3,000 others. God, we bless you for giving Father Harden your vision and a team of people that are able to keep the educational formula together. And we give thanks that Dr. Hudson comes with the recognition and the understanding that I am you and you are me. Father Harden, favorite words. It is written in one of the classrooms on the walls of this university. And that's the power, hallelujah, that is going to change the world. It starts today. Thank you for your power, Lord. Today is the day when we won't leave the way we came. We're going to leave here stronger. We're leaving here with your power. God, I know you feel it. Hallelujah. Grants us, God grant us the power to go out and change the world. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Now, this is a good afternoon, right? Yes, this is a good afternoon, so we're gonna try that one time. Good afternoon. Yeah. I love it, I love it. That's what class 22 does, I love it. So, my name is Dr. Sean Huddleston, and I have the privilege, honor, and pleasure of serving as the fifth president of Martin University. And I stand before you today in regalia in the, that is made in the traditional colors of Martin University. And a lot of people don't actually know the true name of the colors, so I'm going to give you a little bit of education right now. So you'll look at our colors and you'll say brown and gold, but that's not the case. This is rich brown and royal gold. I want you to say that with me one more time. Rich brown and royal gold. So why brown? Brown is the color of the earth, right? You see that globe that we have here? It's the color of the earth. And from fertile ground grows wonderful things. Royal gold stands for the regal nature of Martin University how we produce kings and queens and leaders of this world. So when you see these colors, you're not going to say brown or gold anymore. You're going to say rich brown and royal gold. Can I get an amen? amen? It is my pleasure to welcome you to today's commencement for the class of 22 for Martin University. I'm pleased to present to you today and, bring, and introduce to you the secretary of the Board of Trustees from Martin University, Mr. Terry Morris, who is a senior advisor for Eli Lilly's Racial Justice Inequity. Terry, please join us. Thank you, Dr. Huddleston, and good morning and congratulations to the class of 2022. <laughs> so, today is a great day for a commencement, would you say? <laughs> you know, I ha certainly have the pleasure of serving this great uh, institution. Uh, this institution has existed for 45 years, uh, really this, uh, this year. 
Um, being a part of the board, I would offer, is one of the great honors uh, of my life, uh, to be a part of an institution that has deep roots in this community, um, that has had great impact to date, and equally important, will have greater impact because of the students that we're going to graduate here, uh, here today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge our board. If you all would stand uh, with me, we have a great group of colleagues who are standing locked arms <laughs> with the president and the cabinet on a, uh, on a bold uh, vision for, uh, for this great institution. Thank you, uh, board members. What I'd like to leave you uh, with uh, is a, a bit of reflection of what do you do with all the energy that has come with you today and that will leave with you for the rest of, uh, of your life. Uh, a few years ago, I had an opportunity to visit the St. Uh, Jude's Children's Research Hospital down in Memphis, uh, Tennessee. And uh, in the halls of that great institution, there was a, a placard that stood out with me, and, I, and that I'd offer it will stand with me for a lifetime. And it was a quote from the founder of that institution, uh, Danny Thomas. Uh, he said, if I don't live another moment, I know why I was born. You know, I would ask that each of you take all the energy and take all of the, uh, all of the effort and uh, reflect on that, enjoy it, and thank all of your family and friends that got you to today. Um, reflect on that and then take some time to decide how are you going to use the rich knowledge, the rich experiences, the rich relationships that you've amassed uh, here to decide why were you born and leave this world uh, with lasting, lasting impact. So thank you for choosing Martin. Thank you for supporting these great, uh, these great students. And uh, we look forward to partnering with you and reaching your, your full potential. Thank you. So when the word got out about the Martin University class of 2022, I got calls from all over the country from people who wanted to come and pay their respects and, and say good words. And so Jay-Z and Beyonce called, I said, um, we really want to you, and you know, uh, Barack and Michelle, and I was like, yeah. But there was one gentleman who said, I have to be there. Someone who is a true believer in, supporter of, and fighter for, Martin University. And I'd like to bring up to the stage for a few words our friend, the Honorable Joe Hogsett, Mayor of Indianapolis. Congratulations. Please don't tell Barack Obama that I, that I used to work for him. My thanks to Dr. Huddleston, to Martin University faculty, to the Board of Trustees, to all of my fellow speakers, to those who are being honored today for their years of service, but most importantly to the Martin University graduating class of 2022. You know, the, the plain fact is, it's not just your family and your friends that are celebrating your graduation today. It's the city of Indianapolis that is celebrating your graduation today. To get here, to get to this point, you had to be enormously dedicated to your education. You know, the truth is, family and friends, supporters of Martin University, These last several years have demanded more out of this graduating class than any graduating class before. 
And that should make today's celebration extra meaningful. I know you think I'm starting to preach, but I'm not. I want to acknowledge particularly all of the returning students who are graduating today. Re-entering the classroom as an adult, often with added responsibilities, child care, transportation, that takes an enormous and special commitment. It has never been more important for the city of Indianapolis to make sure that a degree is within the grasp of every resident who wants one. I often say that the precept of my political ideology is that if you want to work, you ought to have a job. If you're willing to save, you ought to be able to own your own home. And if you're willing to study, you ought to get the best education that our city can provide. And by the way, if you're ever sick or your family members are ever sick, by God, you ought to be able to see a doctor in any event. That is partly what makes this school so special. With this 53rd graduating class of Martin University, the professional landscape of Indianapolis becomes more reflective of Indianapolis. We see that in our classrooms, we see that in our healthcare facilities, we see that in our local government. In every profession entered by Martin University graduates. When that happens, this school fulfills that noble mission set out by Father Boniface Hardin and Sister Jane Schilling. That noble mission that they set out to establish to fulfill a promise of a more equitable and a more prosperous Indianapolis for all of Indianapolis. No one left out. No one left behind. So to the Martin University class of 2022, I not only congratulate you on this impressive achievement, but for the good you bring, the wellness that you bring, the hope that you bring for a better Indianapolis. May God bless you, graduating class of 2022. Thank you, Mayor, for those inspiring words. I will now like to introduce Michael Williams, class of 2022, who will pre present to us our student reflection. Your time is now. Good afternoon to graduates, faculty and staff, family and friends. My name is Michael Williams and I am your class of 2022 graduation commencement speaker. Before I begin, I would like the graduates to stand and give honor to the administration, professors and student body of this prestigious college.
For Dr. Huddleston and his staff have done an excellent job and effort to ensure we as students have the tools necessary to push our way through such difficult times. I would also like to acknowledge the fathers, the mothers, the brothers, the sisters, family and friends for helping us get to this important point. You may be seated. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, today I will discuss two topics really dear to my heart. Two topics that tell a story of ambition, passion, sacrifice, endurance, and commitment to being the best version of yourself. One, overcoming adversity. And two, dreaming big. These two topics are connected within each other because understanding that dreaming big will require you to overcome much adversity. Let me ask, how many believe in his word? Can I get a hand raised? Let me ask that again. How many of you believe in his word? Okay. Watch this. Your situation cannot change his word, but his word can change your situation. Your situation cannot change his word, but his word can change your situation. Well, you may ask, Mike, what does his word have to say about overcoming adversity or dreaming big? Well, I won't have you pull out your Bibles. Um, but 2 Corinthians chapters 4, verses 8 and 9 says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. When I first stepped foot onto Martin, I was immediately embraced with love from students and faculty. This set the well-needed foundation for the support I needed to prepare myself for the storms of life. Well, you may ask, Mike, what are the storms of life? All of us at some point in our life have been impacted by the turbulence of strong winds, pouring rains, and that can sometimes feel like a hurricane or a tornado has struck your life. Who in here has ever felt like a hurricane or a tornado has ever struck their life before? I know I have. Today I ask you, what did it make you? Some are afraid. Some are nervous. Some are paralyzed and allow the storm to immobilize them, to control them. See, the thing about adversity, it's inevitable. But every challenge we successfully conquer serves to strengthen not only our will, but our confidence and therefore our ability to confront our future obstacles. In the words of Oprah, adversity is an opportunity to turn painful wounds into wisdom. Adversity is an opportunity to search deep within yourself and grasp the true meaning of the power you must unleash. For those that are afraid, that are nervous, for those that are paralyzed by their storm. Nelson Mandela once said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but to triumph over it. Yeah. The brave is not he or she who does not feel afraid, but he or she who conquers their fear. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, 
If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. What he say? If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Allow me to share with you my story about what overcoming my adversity looks like. Overcoming my adversity looks like losing my childhood friend to suicide. Overcoming my adversity looks like finding my best friend dead with no explanation. Overcoming my adversity looks like witnessing my sick mother struggle to support three children with little to no help while also struggling to fight for her life. Overcoming my adversity looks like watching also my father fight to stay in the land of the living. Overcoming my adversity looks like six day, 12 hour shifts to put myself through higher education. Overcoming my adversity looks like surviving multiple car accidents by the grace and mercy of God. Overcoming my adversity looks like 4 a.m. when you cannot sleep at night. Overcoming my adversity looks like no one wanting you, but wanting the blessing God has put upon you. Overcoming my adversity looks like stress, depression, anxiety, disappointment, disrespect, and heartbreak. Overcoming my adversity looks like being alone. Overcoming my adversity looks like December 31st, 2012, at 11.59, when I decided to take my own life. Overcoming my adversity looks like God speaking to me, telling me, Michael, get up. Get up. Your time is now. Graduates, I am no preacher, but God has tasked me to deliver this message that tells you, although we celebrate today, your storms are yet to be over. There will be yet another time where the trials of life will be upon you. And I ask, what will you do? Will you allow it to swallow you whole? Will you be consumed by it? Will you be paralyzed by it? Your situation cannot change his word. But his word can change your situation. Well, Mike, what does his word say? Well, Isaiah 43 and second says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The, fire, the flames will not set you ablaze. I'm here today to tell whoever is in the midst of their storm that the power within you is greater than any tribulation that your storm can possess. That the power within you is greater than any heartbreak. That the power within you is greater than any demon. That the power within you is greater than any obstacle put in front of you. That your power is sufficient. I come to tell you that when I look around the room, I see a power that is enough to repair generations, to change communities, to impact the world. But first, we must dream big. Harriet Tubman once said, I always remember 
You have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Graduates, as we embark on this new journey, understand that we must first dream big. I need everybody to say this with me. We must what? Dream big. We must what? Dream big. It's the last time. We must what? Dream big. Dreaming big. See, dreaming big is not to limit yourself to the things others may believe are impossible. No one who was ever was great never dreamed small. So when you dream big, do not be disappointed when others do not have the eyesight to see your vision. For your vision may blind them. Who in here has ever lost someone along the journey? I know I have. Understand that your dreams may have the potential to change the very dynamic and foundation is life as we know it. So be not afraid to dream big. I am depending on you to dream big. And every one of you, I'm talking to my students, I need you to dream big. I'm talking to your children, I need you to dream big. I am talking to your fathers, your mothers, your sisters, your brothers. I am talking to you. I see in this room the potential to move mountains within your bloodline, to break curses within your family tree, to change the tide, to rewrite the story, to rewrite your story. Understand that you are a model for your community, your children, your brothers and sisters, an inspiration to me. My time here at Martin has been nothing short of a blessing. The professors, administrators, the students, all pushed me to being the best version of myself. So when I speak about adversity, I cannot help but remember the times where I felt I lacked the strength, the sleepless nights, the frustration of feeling I'm not good enough. The doubt I couldn't be the person I dreamed of being. But today, everybody, but today, I am made new. Through the power invested in me, I say to myself, your time is now. Graduates, the adversity you will face is preparing you for the time of greatness. Strive and continue to reach for the stars and do not stop here. Graduates, I challenge you. I challenge you to look and search deep within yourself and find what the storm can cause us all to lose, and that is you. You have withstood the pain. You have withstood the trauma. And you have withstood the wounds. But your time is now. Now is the time to step into the person you dreamed of being. Now is the time for you to be the best version of yourself. Now is the time to evolve and revolutionize yourself. Now is the time to take your family back. Now is the time to take your life back. Now is the time to inspire, to motivate, to encourage. Now is the time to set yourself free. Now is the time. So when we leave graduates and we start our new journey, know that you have the power to overcome any adversity Know that you have the power to overcome any storm put in front of you. And know that you have the power to dream big. And as I close, graduates, 
My name is Michael Williams, and I am honored to say, class of 2022, we made it. And don't forget, your time is now. Thank you. Michael Williams, that was powerful, and that was inspirational, and let me just say this, thank, you talked about December 31st, 2012, 11.59 p.m. Mm -hmm. I think we all thank God for January 1st, 2013. At 12 over. So now is a very special time in our ceremony today where you will be joined, class of 2022, by two others, two who receive honorary doctorates from our university. For over 500 years now, institutions of higher education have conferred honorary doctorates to individuals whose contributions to their professions, their chosen causes, and society have made lasting impact. So for Martin University, this is a very special time as we select and recognize leaders and history makers who have truly made a lasting impact in our communities and personify the mission and values of our beloved institution. Today, we honor two individuals whose lives and accomplishments personify success, they exemplify excellence, and they model servant leadership. I want you to pay close attention to the biographies of these two individuals that I read today, and you'll see why they were perfect choices for honorary doctorates from Martin University and to join the class of 2022. So now, I invite a great leader and history maker, Dr. Charlie Nelms, to join me on the stage to receive the Honorary Doctorate of Human Letters. I'm sorry, Humane Letters. Charlie Nelms. Charlie Nelms. So Charlie Nelms is considered by many to be a giant and pioneering leader in higher education. He's a compelling storyteller, a dedicated activist, and one who has truly progressed the cause of higher education for African Americans across this country. Charlie obtained his undergraduate degree from the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, which is a historical black college, HBCU, he earned his master's and doctorates from Indiana University and became the first African American to be appointed chancellor of an IU campus and vice president of the university system. <laughs> Charlie's eminent career includes serving as chancellor of North Carolina Central University, which is also an HBCU. And during his tenure as chancellor of NCCU, U.S. News and World Report ranked it one of the best public HBCUs in the nation three consecutive years. So Charlie, or Dr. Nelms, has been widely recognized for tackling issues beyond academia and in communities at large. In fact, in 2012, President Barack Obama honored him with the MLK Drum Major for Service Award for helping to address the most pressing needs of our community. Amen. 
Charlie and his spouse, Janetta Sherrard, are philanthropists who have established scholarship endowments at every institution they've been affiliated with. And each year, 30 to 40 students are awarded the Nelms Scholarship. So Charlie and his beautiful bride are the proud parents of Rashad, a career employee with the United Nations World Food Program, who I believe both are here with us today. And in retirement, Charlie, or Dr. Nelm, serves as president in residence with the United Negro College Fund and as a senior consultant with the Association of Governing Boards of University Colleges in Washington, D.C. It is my pleasure to now bestow the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters to Dr. Charlie Nelms. Thank you very much. Hold fast to dreams, for, for when dreams die, life is like a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Langston Hughes. Michael, thank you. Remember this, the only thing larger than your dream should be your imagination. And, 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 and if, you, if your dream isn't larger than your imagination, go back to sleep and wake up. And wake up. When you're compelled to do so by your dream. I'm from a family of 11 children. Mama and Papa, picking cotton, chopping cotton in Arkansas. And Mama said, if you get yourself a good education, nobody can take it away from you. And Mama didn't lie. So I have a final assignment I have to give you as someone who spent over 50 years in higher education. Now, my Mama had a third grade education, as did my father. And my mother did not know what an oxymoron was, but she used the language that's similar to an oxymoron for all of those English professors who are in the audience here. And she, when she wanted us to remember something, she would say, don't forget to remember. <laughs> to tell Ms. Jones to send me a spool of thread for the quilt we're working on. Don't forget to remember X, Y, Z. So here's the assignment I have for you. And so to make sure that I don't go on too long, I wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote it down. So the first thing I, I want to say to you in, in the words of my mother is, don't forget to remember that you did not get here on your own. There was, there was an entire village long before Hillary Clinton told you that it takes a village. There was a village supporting you. It may have been a friend or a family member who made sure you had transportation to campus or loaned you some gas money. It may have been one of your children, a sibling, a spouse, a significant other, or a friend who kept your child or children while you worked on an assignment. It may have been a supervisor at work who permitted you to leave a little early or to come in a little late so you could take an exam. Whoever it was, they invested in your success. And I challenge you not to forget to remember their investment in you. Don't forget to remember that you have an obligation to do well and to do good. Career-wise, you can do well for yourself and you can do good for other people. And as a gray beard, bald headed man, I can tell you that you can do well and good, and one is not a substitute for the other. Third is don't forget to remember Martin University. Not just the place, but the people who did more than deliver a good lecture to you. Don't forget to remember. 
They model for you what it means to be authentic, caring, and compassionate without abandoning their commitment to excellence. Don't forget to remember Martin University. And if you make a dollar, make sure you give Martin a nickel or a dime. Make sure that you invest in the institution that produced you. And four, don't forget to remember that education is more than a collection of classes. I know you're gonna get a diploma today, but you're not educated yet. You're not educated yet. The only thing that you have demonstrated up to this point is that you have the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn in an increasingly global world. Don't forget to remember that you can be a philanthropist, and being a philanthropist is not about how much money you give, but whether you give in a manner commensurate with your capacity and with the spirit of giving. So don't get confused by, by Warren Buffett and, and, and Bill and Melinda Gates and, and Soros and all of those people. Don't get confused by them. Become an, a philanthropist. And then finally, I want to leave you with the words of Alan Bozak, who said, we will go before God to be judged, and God will ask, where are your wounds? And we will answer, we have no wounds. And God will ask, was there nothing worth fighting for? I submit to you today, this 14th day of May, that there's not only something worth fighting for, there's something worth living for. And you have an obligation to make a world a better place than you found it. Thank you. We're gonna take a quick picture with Charlie Nelms and his certificate. His parents would like, if his family would like to join him over with the picture, then we will be over here. Class of 22, that is your first one. Now, I do recognize it's getting a little warm in here. We do have the AC on full blast, so we need about 36 of y'all to hold your breath for about another <laughs> It is now my pleasure to invite the trailblazing jurist, lawyer, and another history maker, former Indiana Supreme Court Justice Myra C. Selby, to join me on stage to receive the Honorary Doctorate of Laws degree. <laughs> Throughout her career, Myra Selby has pushed the boundaries of what's possible. Along the way, she's paved new ground for women and people of color in the legal profession. Born in Bay City, Michigan, Myra received a Bachelor of Arts from Kalamazoo College with honors and a JD Juris Doctorate from the University of Michigan. In 1995, Myra became both the first woman and the first African American to serve as a justice on the Indiana Supreme Court. While there, she helped write numerous landmark decisions on state property taxes, insurance, and tort law reform. The Indiana Supreme Court appointed her to chair its Commission on Race and Gender Fairness to Advance Equity and Diversity in the Legal System in 1999, and she continues that work today as a current member of the Commission. In 2016, 
President Barack Obama nominated Myra to serve as a judge in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Wow. I told y'all. Myra blazed new trails as the first African American at a large law firm in Indianapolis where she was named partner. And if you don't know, that is a huge deal. She focuses her practice on the healthcare industry at Ice Miller, and she's played a significant role in the firm's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, serving as partner in charge of the firm's diversity and inclusion committee, and as a committed member of the firm's racial equity solutions team. She services and counsels clients on ways to promote fairness and equality within their organizations. Myra's efforts have been in turn been recognized with numerous awards and other recognitions, including the Saginaw of the Wabash Award conferred upon her by Governor Frank O'Bannon, the Torchbearer Award, a trail, trailblazer from the Indiana Commission for Women, a Breakthrough Woman Award from the Coalition of 100 Black Women, and the Antoinette Dakin Leach Award from the Indianapolis Bar Association, Association for Women in the law section. Myra is married to Bruce Curry, and they have two wonderful children, a daughter Lauren and a son Jason, both here with us today. Myra, please, move your, please remove your hat. It is now my privilege to confer upon Myra Selig the Honorary Doctorate of Laws from Martin University. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's let everyone in the audience supporting all of these grads stand up and stretch just a minute. Stand up and stretch. Take a breath. Yes. Yes. Take a breath. Relax. Breathe. Right. Wave. Turn around. Right. Because I know it gets warm gets a little stifled, and you're all thinking about, what are we doing this afternoon? What are we eating? <laughs> yeah. To President Huddleston, the Board of Trustees, President Huddleston's magnificent and wonderful wife, Tasha, President Huddleston's cabinet, and to all of Martin University, Thank you very much for this wonderful honor today and this recognition from this very special place, Martin University. Yes. Yes. Class of 2022, I want to talk to you a little bit about the fact that you're coming out of a very special place. And you've heard it mentioned, Father Boniface Hardin and his founding of this place right here in the middle of the city of Indianapolis. You've heard about the rich history of your school colors. But also Martin is a special place because you know this place. You have the ability to know deeply what your university stands for, how and who created it, and why it exists. And that is a blessing. So many people, myself included, have gone to institutions of higher learning. They're just institutions. They may have rich and storied histories, but the graduates, as they move through, they don't know anything about that. They don't know the who and the how and the beginning. You have that opportunity 
And if you don't immerse yourself in it, you're missing out on something. So be sure as you walk across the stage today and then go on and into your various lives, you remember this is the place that you came from, Martin University. I want to say something about your president, Dr. Sean Huddleston. He is an amazing, an amazing force. He He came to Martin University with lots of conversation, whispers, questions about who is this person? Where is he from? What's he going to do at Martin? You are all the proof. You're the evidence of what he is going to do. But I had the pleasure of spending, I don't know, six, eight months with, with Sean working on a project for someone you heard earlier, our own Mayor Joe Hogsett, and we would meet sometimes weekly, but more often every other week and then monthly right here at Martin University working on this blue ribbon panel that we were on. And I got to know him during that time. He's such a strategic and critical thinker, but he's also someone that can appreciate the grays, the areas where, you know, you can't, you can't say it's all this way or that way, blue or black, yellow or red. And Sean appreciated those nuances as we were doing our work together. And what I learned from him was that he walks these halls every day. He knows everyone and everyone knows Dr. Huddleston because that's the kind of place that Martin University is. So you've been reminded by other speakers to thank the people that helped you come to this place where you are today. I want to add one more thought about that. And I'd like you to just think about and gesture with a wave or with a hand on your heart. Who's that one person or who are those people who you will take with you now and into your future? Add to the people that helped you get to this point the people that are going to help you go on because you are now at a point where you're stepping into a new future. I also want to say thank you to Michael in reminding all of us of the importance of dreaming. So now, you've acknowledged your supporters, you've heard from your wonderful classmate, and so it should be very clear that today is your day. You have your degree, or you're going to get it shortly. You did the work. You earned that piece of paper, right? Yes. 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 What happens next? Do you have a plan? Are you already set with your next step? Whether you can say a quick, yes, I am, or well, not really, there is something grounding that will be vitally important for your success. That grounding is in having and building a strong identity. Not very long ago, a young law student came to me and said, how do you, oh, he, that baby is not happy, not happy. <laughs> this young law student uh, woman came to me and said, how do you manage, how do you speak when you have to speak to a room full of or even one what I see constantly in business and in law and in the rooms that I'm trying to get into which is older white 
men. And I took a breath and I said to her, well, one of the ways is to erase that notion that it's you speaking to an older white man or woman or whatever. I said, what I try to do in each and every conversation and transaction is remember my purpose, remember why I am there, and then things will go as they go. I don't focus on the they or the them or the he or the him. I focus on why I am there. That means that I should be bringing something of value to the conversation. I, I should know what I'm speaking of. My children tell me I confuse it with always wanting to be right. But really, at the end of the day, it's really all about wanting to be in a conversation where I know that I'm in it for a reason, and that reason will be why I stay in it. So, your identity. It's your greatest and most unshakable strength. It's your uniqueness, your culture, your ethnicity. It's what makes you, you. So examine yourself and know your identity in all of its aspects. Perhaps you haven't really thought about it, but ask yourself, who am I? What are the qualities and beliefs that make me who I am? What makes me different from other people? The social constructs uh, and various attributes of identity include, in our society, race, ethnicity, gender, religion, social class, sexual orientation, and gender identity. But I'm not really speaking about your social identity, that is how you present yourself to others or the outside world. What I'm really talking about is what is inside you, the fabric of your being that you can summon forward whenever you need to without even trying. That's your identity. So, just a few areas of identity to think about. Your values, yes. such as honesty, right. integrity. Yes. Your beliefs. Yes. We often silo beliefs into religion or faith-based traditions. And that's an important source of beliefs. But others include your family experience, your story, your upbringing, perhaps some of the people that are sitting back there. Yes. Your personality. Are you quiet? You love to laugh? Are you shy? Are you a jokester? A nurturer? Are you that guy that's always on the social committee? Or do you prefer to be alone or just with a few people? Being grounded in identity will enable you to access an internal support system for moving through challenges. And today, the newest part of your identity is what? You're a Martin University graduate. So you might be thinking, wait, 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 wait. I just went through all of what I went through. Studying, going to class, taking exams to get this degree, and now you tell me it's all about identity? What? No, that's not what I'm saying. Rather, I'm just encouraging you to think about who you are. As you've heard from one of our earlier speakers, why was I born? Why am I here? Those are thoughts that shouldn't be too distant at any moment. So ground yourself in that identity as you go from this place. Next, I'd like to invite you to consider this. There is still a substantial gap in America between the wealthy, on the one hand, and, on the other hand, the poor. The haves and the have-nots. As we know, this gap is even more pronounced between white Americans and people of color 
especially black Americans, even in households with similar educational, occupational, and demographic characteristics, a black household earns substantially less than a white household by a magnitude of anywhere between 15 and 25 percent. Many changes need to occur in order to address this gap, including equitable compensation in the workplace, increased financial literacy, increased investment in home ownership, but many would argue that the most effective way in which to build significant wealth for people of color is to become a business owner. In fact, Randall Pickett and his co-author Jeffrey Robinson write in their book, Black Faces in White Places, that black business ownership is the only way to build, black, build wealth in the black community. Whether, that, whether it's the only way, that may or may not be true, but I would invite you to give it some thought. Some may think that owning a business is just not, it's just not what they want to do. It's not really for them. Or maybe you already have a job, and so you've already got your pathway set. And you want to stay in that field, or stay in that job, or grow in that job. That's fine. That's okay. In fact, that's excellent. But regardless of which of those two camps you find yourself in, you might want to consider at the very least, and I would encourage you to adopt an entrepreneurial mindset. An entrepreneurial mindset. Now, most of us are in one of three categories when it comes to your life's work. Employee, someone who works, at a job for wages. A new entrant, someone who is new to the job market, either because they're a young person coming up, or a recent graduate, or someone who's been displaced and out of the job market due to a layoff or due to something we all experienced. It's called COVID. The third category is an entrepreneur, where you run, and or own your own business. No matter which category you fall into, you can adopt an entrepreneurial mindset for all of your work efforts and reap more from your knowledge and experience while doing more to grow wealth. How does that work? If I don't want to own my own business or I don't think that's the way I want to go? Well, as an employee, you work for someone else, whether it's a company, a person, a group. But think about additional ways to monetize your skills, abilities, experience, even hobbies. I think millennials get this. I think things like Etsy, things like the opportunity to sell your talents, to sell your skills, to sell your products, in open channels and non-traditional channels is a great example of entrepreneurship. What about a new entrant into the job market? Applying the entrepreneurial mindset would mean that even as you are looking for a position as an employee, you might look at the possibility of at the same time, in parallel, starting your own business. The goal here is to operate in parallel. So don't give up the search for the job so that you will gain that income and stability. But at the same time, think about the other aspects of who you are that can be beneficial to you. And finally, a real entrepreneur, a self-employed or business-owning individual. Apply the entrepreneurial mindset, always looking for solid performance and the ability for your company to grow. Why should you apply the entrepreneurial mindset? Well, applying the entrepreneurial mindset doesn't mean that you are committing to be a business owner, but it does mean that you will start thinking in ways to accrete to yourself the wealth that you are creating. And we're all creating wealth all the time. So keep more of it. Keep it in your family, keep it in our communities.
keep the wealth that you are creating. There are different types of entrepreneurial efforts and businesses, but they fall largely into two categories, lifestyle ventures and growth ventures. Lifestyle ventures typically will supplement income. They're usually part-time. Examples are freelance working, consulting, small retail where you own a coffee shop, a cafe, a beauty salon. Those are all entrepreneurial ventures, right? Lifestyle ventures are something that can remain small if that's what you want so that they do supplement or you can allow them to grow. One example of that is Lisa Price, who was the founder of something that many of the women in the room know and are familiar with, Carol's Daughter. You know, the products we use on our skin and our hair. Lisa Price started that out of her home just to make it when she was down on her luck and couldn't find a job. Imagine, Carol's Daughter products are in JCPenney's. They're all over. They're all over. She went from lifestyle and small to huge. The huge is called a growth venture. And when we think of growth ventures, we do think big. We think of Microsoft's Bill Gates. We think of Radio One's Kathy Hughes. We think of, yes we do, Oprah Winfrey. All of these founders demonstrated that their ideas were good ideas. And they brought in others to invest and to help them grow. And at the same time, what did they do? They created wealth for themselves and for their investors. Growth ventures often begin with a single person, so remember that. Please don't sit here and think, I, I, I can't do it, because you can. And in fact, that is the way to do it. You can franchise or have a business partnership. The possibilities are endless. And as our speakers have already said, you want to dream and you want to dream big. So in closing, this is such an exciting and important time for all of you. Today, it's your joy. But tomorrow, next week, or even next month, have a talk with yourself about your identity, the entire package that is you, your uniqueness that we need in the world. And then try on the entrepreneurial mindset. See where it takes you. We're all so excited to watch you soar. Thank you. If Myra's family would like to join us over here for a picture. Let's give another round of applause for both of our honorees um, joining our 2022 class. What a privilege it is to have such dynamic additions to our honorary doctorate tradition. Another tradition here at Martin University is presenting our Martin graduates with the Sister Shelley, Jane Schilling Award and the Triumph Award. To present this year's award recipients is our Angela Adams. Good afternoon. 
The Sister Jane Schilling Award symbolizes the endeavors of a person who dedicated her life to the education and service to the community. This award is given to a student who embodies the accomplishments of Sister Jane Schilling in their pursuit of higher education. The award recognizes an undergraduate or graduate student who has consistently demonstrated a dedication to serving and inspiring fellow Martin University students in spite of personal challenges or endeavors. So I would like to announce the Sister Jane Schilling Award recipient is Miss Kiana E. Williams. Okay, next is the Triumph Award. The Triumph Award is given during commencement to a graduating undergraduate student who has the highest grade point average. According to the selection process, the Office of the Registrar, for today that's me, will provide the student with the highest GPA. So, the student of the class of 2022 with the highest GPA is Mr. Ronald. Johnson with a 4.0 GPA all four years he has been here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angela, and congratulations, graduates. Now we're going to get a chance to stretch your legs a little bit more. We're going to invite Alonzo Williams again and ask you to join as he sings and plays the Negro National Anthem.
Thank you so much. Um, I'm so sorry, you could have stayed standing. Will the graduating class of 2022 please rise? <laughs> These candidates have completed all academic requirements for their prospective degrees, and on the recommendation of their faculty, President Hudson, I am pleased to present to you the class of 2022. All right, so the class has been presented, and I have to accept you as a class, right? But I gotta check with a few people to make sure I can do that. So with everybody sitting back there, if you are the parent of one of these graduates, please stand. And if you, are, all right. If you're the child of one of these parents, these graduates, please stand. If you are the brother or the sister, of one of these graduates, please stand. If you are the cousin or another family member of one of these graduates, please stand. And if you are just a close friend who has been there every step of the way and somebody who wants to see them graduate, please stand. Now I ask you, should I accept this class? The yeses have spoken, you all may be seated. So graduates, there's only one thing left to do. We need to make you graduates. So your tassels should be on the right. Your tassels down on the right, make sure you put it on the right. Because we are now going to have the tassel ceremony, which essentially changes you from being someone who was aspiring to be a college graduate to being a college graduate. So class, I ask you now to move your tassels from the right to the left. Have a seat. You can have a seat. I'm going to be really brief in my remarks because I think more than anything else, y'all want to get across the stage, right? So a few weeks ago, Martin had an amazing event called the Empowering Excellence Gala. It was our first major fundraising event, and we were raising money for a new scholarship initiative that we were starting at the university called the Legacy Scholarship. And here's a thought with the Legacy Scholarship. We believed that truly empowering excellence means empowering you all and empowering our students to create a legacy in their family of education and success. And so the thought is that we would raise scholarships that our students could in turn award to people and their families and in their circles and in their villages who they've been thinking about that could use the opportunity that they are pursuing or completing. So as a way to create this legacy of leadership and excellence in your own families. In that uh, event that we had, I spoke about uh, my best friend uh, growing up. His name was Mickey Carter. And uh, at about 12 years old, he and I were talking about our futures and what we wanted. You know, it was that time of year when we would see a car drive down the street, so that's my car. That's my house, that's my this. And we talked about these things that we want to do for the future and he looked at me and he said, you know what we're gonna do? He said, every day we're gonna look in the mirror and we're gonna say to ourselves, success is inevitable. Now first of all, Mickey was smarter than me, he had all A's, I didn't really know what inevitable meant at the time. I didn't know how to say the word and I was like, that's a lot of pressure, right? But I learned that inevitable means something is bound to happen. No matter what, it might not happen at the time that you want it to happen. It might not happen exactly in the way that you want it to happen, but success is gonna happen because it's inevitable. And so I did that every day. I would say success is inevitable. 
And then I stopped saying it every day, and I only said it in the days when things really got hard or things were really good. When things were really hard, I'd be like, all right, Sean, success is inevitable. And on good days, I'd be like, yes, success is inevitable. And I promise you, it worked. You hear a lot of people talking about failure is inevitable, right? They talk about this idea that everybody's going to fail, so you might as well fail fast or recognize it, but don't let it hold you down. And that's true. That really is about resilience, right? But when you use that word inevitable in a phrase, it means whatever you say before it is bound to happen. So you can say failure is inevitable and failure is bound to happen. Or you can say success is inevitable and you can make success happen. You can will it to yourselves. So I want y'all to say it to me with me just one time. Success is inevitable. Now if you say that to yourselves and you say that to the people in your village, it will truly happen and you will not just change your life, but you will change every life around you. But we're gonna help you start changing every life around you. The class of 2022, Every single graduate sitting here today is going to receive a $1,000 legacy scholarship. Absolutely. You are going to take that scholarship and that person that's been on your mind, that person that you have said, you know, Bebe, Jojo, whatever the name is, that person, man, if I could just get them to school, they would see it. So Kiana Hall here has these legacy scholarship certificates that is being passed to every individual in this class. Congratulations, <laughs> class of 2022. All right. Here's the moment you've been waiting for. I'd like to direct our ambassadors to prepare to distribute the degrees to the class of 2022. Ambassadors, please take your seats. Vanessa Renee Adams, Master of Science, Community Psychology. Adesolo Blessing Adefo La Ju, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. <laughs> Kinshasa Yvonne Allender, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. Stephanie Bell, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. <laughs> Carla Bingham, Masters of Science, Community Psychology. Diana Marie Coffey, 
Masters of Science, Community Psychology. Dion D. Davis, Master of Science, Community Psychology. Yeah. Anthony W. Eldridge, Master of Arts, Urban Ministry Studies. Valerie Gibson, Master of Science, Community Psychology. Ryan Gill, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. <laughs> Valerie Hawkins II, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. Rosie Lee Hernandez, Master of Science, Community Psychology Licensing Track. <laughs> Victoria L. Jones, Master of, si of Arts, Urban Ministry Studies. Michael Angelo McClendon, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. Prince Godwin Noble, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. Olivia M. Payne, Master of Science, Community Psychology, Licensing Track. Robin J. Range, Master of Science, Community Psychology. Jennifer R. Bagley, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Dinesha Bell, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice.
Doris A. Belton, Bachelor of Science, Addictions Counseling. Elizabeth Currit Nava, Bachelor of Science, Liberal Arts. <laughs> Quintana M. Davis, Bachelor of Science, Psychology. Today, R. Dunson Martin, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Jasmine T. Easter, Bachelor of Science, Psychology. Barry D. Gentry, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Cum Laude. <laughs> Jasmine N. Hamer, Bachelor of Science, Liberal Arts, Religious Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Donye D. Hamilton, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Tiana R. Hamilton, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Cum Laude. Alexis Tiana Harden, Bachelor of Applied Science, Applied Science Health Management, Summa Cum Laude. Royale Harris, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, Magna Cum Laude. Tamara Hoskins, Bachelor of Science, Religious Studies. <laughs> Shirley Jackson, Bachelor of Science, Psychology. Ronald B. Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Liberal Arts, Summa Cum Laude. You made it! You made it! Yeah. 
Heather Leanne Martin, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice, magna cum laude. Richard McGee, Bachelor of Science, Addiction Studies, magna cum laude. Florence L. Myers McSwine, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, summa cum laude. Tashanique S. Obajawa, Bachelor of Science, Addiction Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Carolyn Delitris Ray, Bachelor of Science, Teacher Preparation Program, Summa Cum Laude. Carol is our first graduate to receive her pre-K teacher's license. Clarence Tompkins, Bachelor of Science Psychology, summa cum laude. Leah R. Thornton, Bachelor of Science, Psychology, Cum Laude. <laughs> Toshiba M. Tucker, Bachelor of Science, Psychology. Michael D. Tunstall, Sr., Bachelors of Science, Business Administration, Religious Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Damaris F. Watson, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Fiona Aaron Williams, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Michael P. Williams, Bachelors of Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Anthony.
Anthony Woods, Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice. Tangie Woods, Bachelor of Science, Healthcare Management, Summa Cum Laude. Ina I. Wright, Bachelor of Science, Psychology. Well, that long-awaited moment arrived. How did it feel? Good. I done it. You ain't done. You know, Martin, Martin University offers a master's degree. So listen, we have spent a lot of time having every one of you honor be honored by all of us. We want to give you just one minute or so to take a minute to say thank you to anybody out there that is responsible or helpful in this moment today. So if you want to stand up, say what you want to say, we'll take this moment. We got one more thing to do. We got one more thing to do that will make you official. Please take your seats. There's one more official thing you have to do now to cement your legacy at Martin University. And at this time, we'll ask alumni member Dr. Dorothy Heron to come up and induct you in the Martin University Alumni Association. Stand, please. Hallelujah, hallelujah. On behalf of the Martin University Alumni Association, Association we would like to honor the graduates of 2022. It is now my pleasure on behalf of the Martin University Alumni Association to honor your achievement in graduating from the institution and your new standing as an alumni. Hallelujah. You have been given the alumni recognition pin on behalf of the university. I now ask the inductees to please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. Hereby solemnly pledge unbroken allegiance to Martin University. I pledge active membership in the Martin University Alumni Association. Wherever I may go. Say it again. Wherever I may go. Through the, through the association. With fellow alumni. I shall ever do my best to uphold the ideas and tradition of my alma mater, Martin University. Congratulations to the 2022 
alumni graduates. Hallelujah. Please remain standing for the Martin University alma mater. I want to ask everyone before we do the benediction to stand. I believe everyone in this room understands that Martin University was founded by a man that had tremendous faith. And so as the only predominantly black institution in the state of Indiana, I would expect that our commencement will be a little bit different than anybody else's. So as he plays the words to a song, I want you to let float through your mind. And those words are never could have made it. Never should have made it. Never would have made it. That's important because there's a lot of people who in here today who have to realize as you leave this place, there was somebody that did not want you to make it. And yet today you did. So during this benediction, I want you to remember these words that you didn't get here by yourself. Even if you didn't realize that God was on your side, in the valley you weren't by yourself. At night you weren't by yourself. Bow your heads in this place. Lord, we want to thank you today for what our ears have heard for what our eyes have witnessed and for what our hearts have felt. As we leave this place, may we never, ever leave your presence. Acknowledging that while there were others who fell by the wayside, there were some who succumbed, who we wish were here today, but we still made it anyhow. And let us know that we did not make it here by ourselves, for ourselves. There are sons and there are daughters and there are mothers and there are fathers and there are nanas in this room today that we stand who hold up our arms. And so we thank you for that on today. And we're going to leave this place remembering your word. That when man says that there are things that are impossible with you, all things are possible. Now go with us, walk with us. Today is not 
the end. It's a commencement. Today is our beginning. Be with us. Lead us. Guide us. Direct us to higher heights. It's in Jesus' name we benedict. Let every heart say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Now we ask for everyone in the room to, to be seated and remain seated until the graduates and the dignitaries have left the room. You may be seated in the back. We will allow the students and the dignitaries to leave the room. Congratulations. as our dignitaries exit the room.